Hey everyone! Today I'm going to be going over how I personally style a Kaminari wig from My Hero Academia. The wig I'm using as a base is a Helen in Autumn Gold from Epic Cosplay Wigs, as well as a pack of 15-inch wefts in Autumn Gold and a pack of 15-inch wefts in Black. When starting this wig, the first thing I did was go ahead and start teasing the base. Kaminari has a really odd hairstyle, so I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted to start, and teasing first gets me a better idea of what I was working with. Once I had enough of the base teased, I began to pull chunks out and rubber banded them off into sections I knew I'd need. Most of Kaminari's defined spikes are around the bangs slash the top of his head, so I didn't worry much about the back just yet. Once I've got my silhouette sectioned off, I start cutting. Unfortunately, I think I forgot to hit record on my camera for a good chunk of this bang area, so I'm missing quite a bit of that footage. However, long story short, the bangs on the spikes are just a lot of teasing, smoothing, and hairspraying. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on how I shape my spikes on all my wigs, I'll have another tutorial of mine linked in the description box below. However, I actually remembered to hit record while still styling a few of the main spikes, so that's the footage we have going on here. Something I want to mention is that you should never be afraid to change things up as you go. If you rubber banded a section off, you don't have to keep all those hairs in that section if it doesn't look the way you want it. On every wig I work on, I move hairs around from one section to another as I try to balance things and get it to look the way I want. Here you can see me pull a small section out of the bangs to add more dimension to it by giving a little wisp that I saw in a few of the references I found. When I reached the back, I began trimming everything down just a little bit since the base wig was longer than I needed it to be. Once it was trimmed down, I went in with my teasing brush and added a bit more volume by back combing. Then I took my teasing brush and lightly brushed the outer layer of hairs to smooth everything down and used hairspray to swoop the hairs back. Then I just worked my way down one section at a time until all the hairs were swooped how I wanted them. Now comes the fun part, the hairline. To do this, I grab that pack of blonde wefts and use clear contact cement by Padex to glue the ends of the hair together. Alright kids, disclaimer. Contact cement is flammable, toxic glue. If you've ever used contact cement, you'll know there is a very strong odor, so please use it in a well-ventilated space and take the proper precautions as you would any other industrial grade glue. You have been warned, proceed at your own risk. So to do this, I take a small chunk of hairs from my pile and begin squeezing out the contact cement onto the ends of the fibers, making sure I coat both sides really well. Next I take my fingers and smooth out the glue while it's still really wet, squishing the hairs together to make sure it's all coated evenly. Make sure when doing this not to stroke it too many times, because once this stuff starts to dry, it'll start to make ugly glue beads when you touch it. But once it's totally coated, just set it off to the side to dry for a minute. If you're scared about using this glue, you can totally use clear tacky or Elmer's glue to do the exact same thing. The only downside is that there is a much longer drying time. Other than that, I found it works pretty much the same. It does work the same. 
So once we've got all our little weft sections glued, I like to take them and snip the bottoms to try to make them look more like a hairline as possible. By this, I mean I make it a little bit uneven at the bottom by cutting out triangle-like shapes and feathering the stiff glue ends, as you can hopefully see here. Once I like the way it looks, I take my hot glue gun and glue the section into the front so that it hangs low enough to hide the wig's old hairline. Then, I keep adding these little sections of wefts until I'm happy with how the new hairline looks. After these are glued in, I make sure to trim them and smooth them into the spikes that sit behind them. For the zigzag piece, I take my glued hairs and cut and glue them into the shape that I want, holding the pieces up to the bangs as I go to make sure they line up with everything correctly and aren't too big or too small. To get the hair to stick together, I use a little dab of hot glue at the connecting points and then trim the pieces so they look flush. Once I'm happy with how my zigzags look, I use hot glue to attach it to the wig. Once it was attached, there was something about it that I didn't like and wanted it to look less like it was floating on top of the hair and more ingrained with the hairs. So I pulled some hair from the other side of the bangs and smoothed it down over the top of the black piece and trimmed it so that the black looked like it was coming out from under the blonde a bit. Then I did a little more thinning and reshaping on the bangs until I was once again happy with how it looked. Lastly, I went over all my spikes with clear tacky glue, twisting the hairs together at the ends to seal the tips off. Then I trimmed off any hairs that were longer to clean things up. And last but not least, I sprayed down my wig with four to five coats of hairspray, drying each coat in between sprays just to make sure it stays in one piece for as long as possible. And then I was done. So that's how I style a Kaminari wig. I hope this walkthrough helped, and if there are any other wigs you'd like to see me style, please leave your suggestions in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps you with your own wig adventures. One, two, three.